Welcome to the Calvert Quilt Shop and our new block party for 2021, Harriet's Journey by Jennifer Chiavarini. This year we will be studying 106 inch finished blocks to put into the quilt of your choice. And we will learn different te techniques in quilting and in piecing. So today what I would like to do is to actually go over a very simple way to do raw edge machine quilting on your six and a half inch block. In row B, we have two blocks, one called bridal wreath and one called oak leaves, and both of them are applique blocks. For purposes of this video, please, please start with this block because it is much easier than going in and out of the oak leaves. So what you're gonna do first is take the pattern that you have in the back of the book, and here's my background fabric. Applique, by the way, is simply that it is applying a fabric surface to another fabric surface that's how it got its name what I would like you to do is to cut a seven inch square instead of a six and a half inch square even though we're going to finish out to six and a half and then just draw some little pencil marks on here to find the center so that we can actually applique down in the middle of the block and then we will trim it up to the six and a half when you're done so for B2, you are looking for leaves and you're looking for hearts and this one big circle here. One of our students who was an eager beaver and finished this earlier on um, decided that it was, it, I told her that it was a little bit difficult with the circle because it, when you go to put it down on your fabric, it's hard to stay a circle. So Trisha cut out the leaves at the same time she cut out the circle in one absolute for, you know one piece and it absolutely laid down beautiful right right in the middle of the block and then she ironed it down and then she was able to um, applique around the leaves first and then come back and applique around the little circle so let's talk about the applique part okay we have a fusible that we like to use called soft fuse it's it's a little bit more expensive than what you might have tried like heat and bond or something like that but it's it is relatively soft and if you're not familiar with fusibles they have a paper side and they have a glue side and so what we're going to do is we're going to take the paper side and lay your leaf down on there and you can see here that I have actually traced like three of them so far over there on the paper side. Okay, then the next thing you're gonna do is actually rough cut each one of them out. And this is very important. Rough cut means do not cut on the line. You're gonna rough cut around it. Then you're gonna iron it on, so iron side down, to the back side of your fabric. Now it is time to actually come back and cut right on the line all the way around your leaf peel off the paper and of course if you do it with Trisha's method this is one big piece that you're doing this to and then you're going to iron it down to where you want it on the background of your um, square so let's pretend that you're ready to do the embroidery stitch we also put in your little kit some uh, tear away okay which is nothing but it, what it, it literally is you can tear it away when you're done but it is a stabilizer Okay, it's a sew-on stabilizer because when you do this little applique stitch, sometimes just plain old cotton tends to draw in a little bit. You can put our best press on there. We like to do that too because it stabilizes this a little bit better. Anything to make it nice and crisp while you're doing all of these little applique stitches on there. The other thing that I forgot to mention is when you cut out the appliques, don't just use the scissors that you use outside in the garden, okay? Um, I used to have to retrieve mine from my mom because I was the sewer in the family. But we love Karen K. Buckley scissors here. and We carry them in about four different sizes. And they are great for nicely cutting around cotton and not leaving any frays. Just make sure that you, you know, save them for the cottons. Okay, so let's talk about your stitch. And the stitch that I'm going to use to go around the applique is nothing more than a little zigzag stitch. So you dial to your zigzag. I have my open toe F foot on. You want to be able to see the edge of the applique when you do this. And I put the width at 2.0 and I put the length at 0.7. And this one is just a little practice piece that I would suggest that you do so that you get the feel of what it's going to do going around curves. 
Now, there's two different kinds of curves that you encounter when you're doing a machine applique. The easiest one is called the convex curve, and that's the one that you're going to encounter most in B2 when you're going around the leaves and the heart. So here we have a convex curve is an outward curve like this. And here's where I would like you to make that ap applique zigzag just sit. Most of the stitch ends up being on the applique, but sometimes you'll end up having to pivot. And with all the marvelous machines we have now, you just put your needle so that it stops in the down position. And on a convex curve, you're gonna actually always pivot on the with the machine, with the applique being in um, the outside, okay? So, so when you're doing your stitch here, on these, the, this was a pivot here, this was a pivot here, then I continue to sew. Then when it gets hard and you know you have to pivot, just make sure that when you pivot and you sink and lift your press a foot and turn, that it ends up on the outside of the applique. On the leaves, Okay, you have a little bit different story here. So we just we just studied this convex area. Now we're going back to concave. Concave is literally that. It's kind of like a cave. It's going inward. Notice that in the leaves, you're going on the outside, going on the outside, and then all of a sudden you're coming down and you're going on the inside. When you go on the inside, you actually want to stop and do the pivot on the inside of the leaf. So it's right here, right here. So you're coming back and forth, back and forth, same way with the, with the stitch, but you're actually gonna stop and pivot on the applique on the inside when you're working with the concave one. I would suggest just try a separate leaf, especially this one is a little bit easier, and then when you feel comfortable, then you can execute on your other block. So what we've done in a nutshell is raw edge applique open, op, using our open toe F foot, and this is a drawing that shows um, you know that where that dot is okay so if it's an outside curve we're stopping on the off the edge if it's an inside curve we're actually stopping on the applique in order to do our pivot so I would like our cameraman now to kind of journey back over to my poster and come on up and get a close view of the stitching that's around my two blocks so you can kind of see what yours should look like when you're finished and I hope you have a good time doing this. I actually used my embroidery threads from Janome, matching the color of the thread uh, to the uh, color of the fabric that I was using because I have so many different great colors in my Janome embroidery thread. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoy raw edge applique and God bless America.